This is the reboot. Uh, I recently did a major overhaul of the channel. Uh, deleted a lot of older videos because uh, I think I could just do those videos better and more concisely. I could probably touch on like free will and determinism in I don't know two or three videos as a oh, two or three videos as opposed to the whatever ten I had on the subject. So I guess it's, uh, there's nothing too terrible about them. I just I feel like I um, as rambly as my videos are, they were a little rambly and I didn't make uh, points how I would like to make them. So yeah, here's the overhaul. And we're gonna start back on what subject? Um, uh, determinism, I guess. So uh, this is I, I don't have notes or anything. Um, it's pretty easy, pretty simple concept that there's no free will. Um, determinism, you know, we live in a cause and effect universe, and. I just think it's funny because for most, most every part of everyone's lives or 99.9% .9 of everyone's lives, they accept the fact that they live in a physical cause and effect material universe. But when it comes to asking them if they have free will, I think most people just don't understand like the concept and like the philosophy. And that's why people claim they have a free will. But I mean, we have a free will in the sense of like, I'm not chained to a tree and I can go move around and I can go get a snack from my fridge. But the point, the point being with free will is that the thing that makes me want to get a snack from my fridge isn't decided by me. And it's all these small factors that make me who I am and that in turn make me act the way I'm going to act. So it's, uh, I, I think uh, it's to the point where, like, you know, these science fiction movies and stuff with, um, like, seeing the future or coming back from the future or whatever. But let's just say seeing the future. Um, this is sort of off subject, but it, it does relate. So, I mean, if you, built a, if you built some kind of machine that took into account every particle in the universe, which, I mean, it's pretty much, I think it's impossible. But if you did theoretically make that machine you would be able to predict the future. I mean, in this cause and effect, this physical universe. I mean, some people argue that there's some kind of chaotic events, but um, I think we just don't have enough information about them. And I think people like to jump on the, um, whatever that is, the double slit and the <sighs> Huygen or whatever. Or um, what was it, what was that, what was the guy? Oh, man, let me, let me Google that real quick. Double slit experiment guy. Double slit experiment guy. Okay. Whatever. I mean, who cares who it was? Um, just basically, like, we don't know where the particles are going to go, but I mean, they did this experiment how many times, and it wasn't a perfect experiment, so. I don't think it really proves anything. I don't think it proves actual chaos or chaotic events in the universe or randomness. <laughs> chaos, I sound like a farmer. <laughs> but um, so we make this machine, it accounts for every particle in the universe. And, and these uh, these cat calendar kind of movies, these Disney Channel movies or whatever, where you know anything you're having to deal with the past or the future, these science fictions, they act like it's going to affect it by observing it when in reality a machine that takes account every particle in the universe already took account every particle within you and what you're going to do so someone observing the machine isn't going to have any effect it's going to account for that and basically theoretically you could ask the machine like hey what am i going to be thinking and saying in 10 years and it'll it'll spit that information out and you can even try to not do that thing but you're going to end up doing it somehow and it's it's not like some, uh, whatever, what was the movie? Um, Final Destination kind of thing. There's not like death isn't following you or anything. It's just that that machine would take into account already. So, um, but people, I think that whole theme, I guess, it, well, to make good entertainment, for one, the whole theme of like, oh, it 
it messed with the you know reality it messed with like the turn of events like observing it messed with it or something and it would never would i don't think all these like weird paradoxes are they could even exist in the first place with like the time and future or whatever i just think you know you know there's the present and it's going and all these particles are in a a position and they have whatever I, i don't know I'm not a scientist, but they like you know these atoms have charges with the uh, electrons and the uh, protons, and all the particles are in a specific position in the universe, and it's all moving. And um, <clears throat> I guess to get out of the to get out of the, this microscopic level, um, I'm sorry. Give me give me a second. I got to collect my thoughts. I mean, a nice coffee. It's really good. Oh, yeah. People, um, I think that half of it's, well, yeah, to make good entertainment. And the other half, I think, because people are just so egotistical in general, they, they need to feel like they're, they affect things, like they're in control. And that it goes back to the original subject. But the whole, like, oh, I messed with the future by, like, observing the future and that's just like the human ego um i think pretty pretty well highlighted pretty well displayed in media or whatever concept that somebody's talking about because in reality it would not affect it and um i guess to get off the whatever uh the level that we're on to zoom it back out just the whole free will thing and determinism um it's really easy. It's really simple to think about, in my opinion. I like to think of it like, um, you know, those contraptions. You probably you've seen one before. Like you almost think of like a pinball machine or something. But I like to think of like a board with a bunch of nails driven into the board, and then you drop a marble from the top, and it uh, hits the nails. It goes ding, 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 hits the nails, and then it ends up in a certain slot on the bottom of the board. See the. People, they like to think free will exists because they they personally can't account for every single thing that's affecting them. So therefore, it's like this like divine chaotic will within them or like above them or that comes from somewhere other than this physical universe. But it shows how finicky um, the turn of events can happen if you reset that marble in the exact, like say like this exact... Um, by the exact particle, like this exact atomic position that this marble origin originally was in on the top of the board, it might not actually land in the same slot. And that's not due to magic, and it's not due to chance. It's due to like the marble hitting the nail in the first place, and the nail moving slightly, like one one hundredth of a millimeter or whatever. And, and in turn, if it does that to several nails, it could change the outcome of this uh, this experiment. So. I, I just think it's really superficial for people to be just they, they think about it so like one directional like uh, I always you don't always hear but you do hear sometimes where people are like well my, my parents were alcoholics why am I not an alcoholic and it's like it's not that simple there's so many there's so many factors like literally from the day that you're born till now like everything is always affecting you and you're always affecting your environment so for you to whip out a piece of paper and you think you're going to come up with the formula of your life equal sign how it will turn out, you can't. It's kind of like making that theoretic machine that would take account for every particle in the universe. You couldn't take into account every single thing that affected you. But let me tell you, stuff affected you. And some stuff is on that like Freudian subconscious level that you don't really... Uh, you don't think about necessarily but um i like to think of like that is a simple example of just like you know how i guess how much uh, a small thing can affect people i like to think about the board and the nails and just in general the whole free will thing it just it just can't exist logically because I mean, the way we understand the world generally, 90-whatever percent of people, they do... It's funny because even the religious people believe in a physical universe. They'll, they'll understand cause and effect. 
almost fully. But then when it comes to some kind of like divine things that they don't adhere to any of these rules, when in reality, in this universe, there's basically two sides to this coin, where on one side, we have cause and effect. And cause and effect is just that, cause effect. It's like a reaction, it's, an, it's a reaction off of events, equal sign something, some outcome. So it's like a die roll is a good example of cause and effect. As funny as that is, it's funny, like you're playing whatever Monopoly and you roll the dice and you know it's supposed to be random. And in all intents and purposes, when in the game of Monopoly, sure, it's random. But that actual process of the die roll is cause and effect. It's the position the die was in in your hand, how long it had to travel, you know, to hit the table the spin you gave it, you know, the arc, whatever. I mean, it, this is like NASA stuff. I mean, they, they calculate, like, shooting rockets. X marks the spot, you know, like... And that's the, the die roll. It's, like, take into account every single, like, factor imposed on the die. And, yeah, theoretically, you can, you can determine what the die will land on, what number. So that's a good example of cause and effect. And the thing about cause and effect is... It's a brick wall. There's nothing beyond absolute, like, physical cause and effect. So, there's nowhere to go from there. You hit the wall and you're not gonna, like, you're not gonna scrape through it with your fingernails or anything. You're just, you are stopped. There's nothing causey and effectier than cause and effect. That's the end point. And there's no freedom in that. There's no freedom in cause and effect. And that's, I guess, the point I'm trying to highlight. I kind of rambled a little bit. The point I'm trying to say is there's no freedom in cause and effect. Whatever happened, you know, the amount of force you applied to the die was not decided by you. It was decided by previous factors, the page before that. And the way you threw the die was not decided by you. And in turn, this die is going to roll in the way that it rolls based on the very previous page of reality and it brings you to the next page and that's cause and effect no freedom i could have rolled it this way i could have rolled it that way but you didn't you rolled it one way and you were always you were always going to roll it that way rewind time and you're going to roll it the same exact way if you don't affect anything when you know whatever theoretically i mean it's the same you rewind it you're going to roll it the same way You'd have to change something in the past, you know, you have to put a pebble on the sidewalk back when you were 10 years old walking around the suburbs to change that die roll. But you can't do that. So that's cause and effect. No freedom. The other end, which I personally would argue doesn't even exist, but it doesn't even matter uh, to begin with. I mean, in the end, it doesn't matter. But uh, the other end would be, like, chaos or, like, genuine randomness. And, um... As far as we know, the most random thing, I guess people would argue the, the particles, whatever, with this, I, 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 I'm drawing a blank, I'm disappointed because I'm making this video, now I'm drawing a blank. But yeah, these particles, double slit, they don't know where they're going to be, they're two places at once, whatever. No, they, they haven't studied them well enough. That's, I mean, we used to think the earth was flat, and then, oh yeah, we're not, uh, we're not so stupid anymore. I mean, we're always, we're learning stuff about reality. And right now, we don't have the reality of how these particles behave exactly, but it doesn't mean we're not ever going to know. But I don't really think it's even that important, if I'm being honest. I mean, I mean, it is, but it, it isn't. But the whole concept of uh, randomness... Um, forget, I, I think one of the most random things people use are like a whatever, a random number generator, and that has to do with... It's some weird random number generator though, like, it's like a legit one where it'll use like solar flares or something, it'll, I don't know, it'll use like solar flares to spit out random numbers, like, it'll put that through some kind of digital something and then it spits out random numbers based on some kind of like seemingly chaotic event from, yeah, stars or something in the universe, like, it, it's really weird, it's not like a die roll, it's like something like that, but even that, I mean... Yeah, we. I mean, I can't account for every particle in the sun, but if you could, I mean, it wouldn't be random anymore, right? I mean, it's 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 random to us in in a sense, but it's not really true randomness. But even if true chaos existed, um, 
I mean, I, I don't even do I even have to explain it? I mean, if true chaos existed, there's no freedom in chaos. I mean, like, oh, chaotic lightning bolt just happened. I mean, there's no there is no decision there. There's no freedom with it. It just it was like a chaos lightning bolt. There is a chaos action. Some thought came into my head that was completely out of my control. It was a chaos thought. You know, it was completely out of character for me. There would be no reason for me to have this thought. Even based on that whole, like, cause and effect, like, pebble on the sidewalk thing, it was just true chaos. Then there's no choice. There's no freedom. So, it's just so funny. And that's the end of it. That's It's just like the cause and effect thing. That's the brick wall. I mean, true chaos is a, it's a brick wall. You can't get past it. There's nothing chaotic more chaotic than an absolute chaos event. It doesn't get more random than pure random. And that's what I'm trying to say. On one end, we have pure cause and effect, which there's no freedom in. And the other end, there's pure chaos. And I don't mean the universe as a whole, like everything is chaos or everything. I mean, everything is cause and effect, I would argue. But on the way things, just the concept of the way things happen in that concept which does apply to reality it does apply to the universe but yeah on the other end there's chaos and there's no choice in chaos and that's the brick wall so and there people i don't understand they get confused because i think a lot of people would make the argument that no it's it's somewhere nestled in the middle of these two things you know there's, it's mostly cause and effect, but there's a little chaos spiced into that equation. But even, even still, you take one thing that has no freedom in it, cause and effect, and you add chaos to that mix, it's not going to give you freedom. It's, it's just going to add another element of no freedom to the current no freedom situation. So cause and effect pretend it's a pure cause and effect universe i you know someone grows up they're walking down the street there's a pebble in the sidewalk everything is affecting them to make the decisions that they're making and they're affecting the world around them and so on and so forth like marbles knocking into each other it's just like you can't account for every interaction but these interactions are physical and they are happening and they do affect everything i always like to think of it as a spider web like one twang on the spider web somewhere like shakes the whole web it affects everything it's all like sort of woven in and out of each other you know we're all just a piece of it so whatever so anyway in that example it's all it's all cause and effect up until a certain point whatever reason there's this uh there's some kind of chaos lightning bolt or something that happens it strikes the ground strikes a tree it doesn't matter that it was a, a chaos lightning bolt. It was a completely, you know, the weather patterns or whatever, the particles in the air and the precipitate, whatever it happened, you know. I, I don't know exactly what causes lightning bolts, if I'm being honest. There's the electrons in the sky, blah, blah, blah. But basically, the conditions were not met for that lightning bolt to be there, hypothetically, in this scenario. But it happens anyway. As soon as that's in reality, as soon as that's in the physical, this universe, the only universe, as soon as that event occurs it's still i mean well it's in the description i mean i already said it it's in the universe it is a physical thing so almost immediately like that this uh physical law i mean doesn't i don't even want to say takes over because it, it always had control but the it is a physical thing affecting things deterministically and caught and uh causally and uh, causally and effectively <laughs> cause and effectively as soon as it happens it struck the ground the ground reacted it struck a tree the tree reacted the environment the surroundings reacted in some way even to a small degree like 0.001% somebody said something to me it affected me to a small degree 0 .00, it was a chaos word or whatever somebody chaotically got a thought to say something to me and now it's um it's affecting me to some degree, and then go on with your life, so on and so forth. Cause and effect takes a hold almost immediately. It, it always had a hold. As soon as it came, it phased into reality with this ethereal hand wrapped around it. And uh, you can't escape that. As soon as something is, 
it has to obey these like physical laws. There's no there's nothing past cause and effect. There's nothing past chaos. And that's it's just as long as you understand that and even if I mean even still, like like I said, if you mix them, it doesn't give you something new. And if you understand that you can't get past these brick walls of chaos and cause and effect, and I, I'm lean I lean heavily towards cause and effect. Like hundred strict I strictly lean towards that. But I'm just giving the whole like theoretically, giving both sides to the room, both walls. There's no freedom in that. And it's not really, I don't know, I think it, uh, that kind of scares people. I don't have freedom. I don't have freedom. So what changed, you know? I mean, if you think about not having freedom, like, oh, in 10 years, I'm going to be doing something because of cause and effect. Like, who cares? You're not going to know. You, you, it's all new. It's all, it, like, tomorrow's going to be, whether or not you accept the fact that this is this deterministic universe, tomorrow is still a fresh day for you. You don't really know what's going to happen. So it's not really affecting you. It always has its ethereal grasp around you. And it always had it. Just like that lightning bolt, like, since the day you came to be, you, you were touched. <laughs> You were touched by this cause and effect. And it's nothing to be scared of. You know? I, I think of it like a little blanket. But, uh... Nah, I'm kidding. But, um... There's that. And it might take a small break to collect my thoughts. I, I don't know what I'm going to talk about now. Huh. Uh, let's see. I hope I highlighted it okay. I mean, that's, oh, okay, the, well, we can touch on the religion thing, too, now. I mean, that, see, we can condense all these videos I deleted. I know some people think, you know, wow, well, why would you delete all your videos? But I had, like, some of them were bad. They're t I was trying to be too, like, stylish with it or whatever. I don't know. I didn't, I, I rewatched some of them, and I just wasn't happy with them. So I think I grew as a person. And I can make them a little bit better. I mean, they're more of the same, but I think they're going to be a little better now. Um... So, speaking of these ethereal hands, um, let's get into this, uh, the subject of religion. And people like to think that this, uh, this like God character or whatever God, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be the Christian God. It doesn't need to be a Catholic or any kind of particular religion. But um, they like to think of these gods as like above the rules. When if this if a god exists in this in this universe and see some people even right, right there they'll be like oh well it, it's not in this universe it's in the god universe or something it just doesn't matter in reality in if it if it exists I don't even want to say in the universe if something exists period if it is or is not you know the Shakespearean to be or not to be if it is to be it has to follow these rules as I already explained. It can't get past cause and effect. It can't get past chaos. These are brick walls. There's no feasible way to explain how you can get more cause and, cause and effect than strict cause and effect. There's no feasible way to explain how you can get more chaotic than pure chaos. And there's no freedom in either. So if a god is to be, then it's going to have to follow the rules as well. So the funny thing is... I mean, with all that, and the, I mean, I'm going to say the Bible, but it doesn't really matter. It applies to pretty much every religion. The whole thing where God and the devil and blah, 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 they're arguing about free will. I know free will comes up in the, the Bible, you know, like, oh, humans have free will. I don't want to give humans free will. I want to give humans free will. You know, they're arguing, whatever. I think it's the God and the devil, and they're arguing over, like, a poker game or something. Like, if you win, the humans will have free will or something like that. I, I don't know. I think we ended up with free will based on the Bible, but uh, I don't really remember, to be honest. I, I didn't really, you know, I, I've never read it, but um, I, I know enough about it. But the point is, um, with the whole God thing, people like to think of God as this thing that doesn't follow the rules. But if you are to be, you have to. And um, it's funny because God wouldn't have free will if, if God is to be a real thing. So, and it's it's clearly highlighted all over these books. I mean, it doesn't even doesn't have to be Christianity. I know a little bit more about those stories than, you know, like the whatever other world other around the world religions, but 
the point is on in all of these religions it 90% of the time it seems like the, these gods have a psychology and they act just like people which is funny because I mean the whole like the great quote you know one of the great ones of the Bible is like God made man in his image and that's funny because I mean, as a lot of people are figuring out nowadays, I mean, like, t- more people than ever, atheists now are agnostic, which is really stupid, but more people than ever are atheists now, and people are kind of turning away from religion, and, yeah, I mean, God created man in his image. No, I mean, the reality is man created God in man's image because they didn't know how else to work that psychology out. People didn't know how else to create God other than through the way that they think and the way they see the universe. So you can't really invent some other way of doing than the way that you do. And that is like adhering to a psychology, adhering to physical law. And I know God can zip zap around in his magic carpet or whatever, but like, you know, there's some kind of magic engine. There's some kind of cause and effect magic engine that he has or whatever. I don't know. He built some kind of weird thing. See some, it doesn't matter. The point is, in all these stories, God does these things because X, X Y, Z, and it's it's clearly, you know, I I like, I'll just say he, but you know, God, he, she, who cares? But God does these things because he has a psychology. He sent like Jesus down because X Y Z. He punished so and so because blah blah blah. He he had reasons for doing things, so therefore God is pretty much a, a person in the clouds that's every time somebody criticizes it like yeah god's like a bearded man in the clouds and he's doing these things and and all the stories yeah because that's exactly how they paint god and um there's the other end too but like no oh, that's naive those are just stories those are just lessons blah blah i know i i understand that you think i didn't think about that i mean i don't believe in religion in the first place but Yeah, no, God, and then the other explanation, if God's not a psychology, if God's basically not a floaty, bearded man, um, human psychology in the clouds, God's some kind of, like, God is everything. God is, you know, uh, God, you know, the best way to explain that God is everything thing and Gaia and all this is, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the old expression, you know, God's in the gaps and devil's in the details, right? I mean, God is just this really vague notion for some people, like anything they can't explain, which would be, in a way, everything in life. Like, I I always like to say I don't know anything, but at the same time, with that whole philosophy, the whole uncertainty with things in life, I think people get this, like, whatever it is, like this mystical sense, like, who knows what tomorrow's going to bring, like... It's God, you know? I don't know. It's weird. I think it's naive. But, you know, if it... I want to say if it helps you get through your day. But at the same time, I really don't think it's healthy, to be honest, mentally. And, um... But, you know, some people grew up in a different generation. Some people, you know... It's cause and effect, you know? It's determinism. I mean, if you believe in God, you were always meant... You are basically always going to believe in God. And if you change your mind... You were always set up to change your mind since the start of things, since that, you know, start of the universe. It all is this chain reaction. But, um, yeah, so God, God doesn't have a free will. I mean, because free will is impossible and that's okay. I'm not bashing God for that, but God does things because of his psychology. You know, he wouldn't do things, you know. He would just be whatever the wishy-washy people that think God's everything. He would just be the rain. He would just be love and whatever. But, I mean, if God does make decisions, he's doing things because blah, blah, blah. He's not doing these things like, even if he does these things, chaotic events. Like, oh, this happened, therefore I'm going to do this. But there's actually no correlation. It's a chaotic, it's a chaotic psychology event. It doesn't matter. There's still no free will in that. God's doing these things because... God has this evolving psychology, just like all we, all of us. Every second, we're just we are changing, just to a small degree. You know, you hear a sentence, and part of you take a file out of the filing cabinet, put a new one in, put a new marking on it. You know, copy paste here, delete this word, and oh, spell check this. It's just everything is affecting us, and everything affected God. So, you know, I mean, 
I mean, I don't believe in any of that anyway, but... There's no plane. Basically, I guess I was just trying to say there's no plane in reality. There's no plane of existence. There's no ethereal plane that's going to allow you to escape. Because it's just even that said, like... Oh, here's what I was going to say. The layers of that. So we have this... this physical universe this per where we live in the universe there's earth there's our solar system there's our galaxy whatever and there's this like non-ethereal layer and of course this all works the way i just explained it see some people are so desperate that they think like there's this other layer there's like this other entire like plane of being that is not like our reality it's another reality it's like the spiritual ethereal reality outside of it somehow like parallel to it even if you get and this is i think maybe where some people are stuck and i think they think their free will comes from or they think like whatever so somehow this free will is funneled from this like spiritual ethereal layer like a cone into your head and it punctures into our reality and it fills you with your freedom from this ethereal level. It doesn't matter how many layers to the onion you add to it. It doesn't matter how many ethereal spiritual levels. There could be one above that one. There could be one above the level of, of God, the level that created God, the level that created all this space for empty space, whatever it was. But it doesn't matter. Because in that level, there still is no feasible way for things to happen. It would just be ethereal, spiritual cause and effect. It would just be ethereal, spiritual chaos. And that would funnel into you. So, regardless, whether or not your will is coming from some other universal layer parallel to this universe... It still, it has to, just by being, it has to follow the rules. And whether you're getting it from somewhere else doesn't really, I mean, that'd be pretty cool, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because your being is still going to take into account that whatever transaction of additions or subtractions from this ethereal layer for your character and for what you're going to do. So you have this 99% cause and effect you're in the world, or even if you believe in chaos, you have 99% from like our human realm or whatever it is. This, this is getting really wacky. I just, I feel like I wanted to touch on all these subjects so I can just kind of be done with it, to be honest. But 99% um, from our human realm or whatever it is. So you funnel in the ethereal realm and there's that 1%. That 1% just add it to the equation. You just simply add it to the formula, and it will interact with that formula how it will based on how these puzzle pieces fit together. Like, I want to go to the party or I want to stay home and read a book based on all of these factors. Like, how am I feeling tonight? Do I feel like going out? Do I feel like seeing people? Who's going to be there? Like, I, And even the things that you consider are like based on these past experiences. So maybe someone would consider like, oh, what kind of food's there? And that's not so much of a concern for me. It's who's going to be there? Like, what are the activities going to be doing? And some people might account for uh, more things. They might be concerned with more things. Some people might be concerned with less things. And when you add this new dimension layer... Your current formula is going to absorb that in the way that it will formulaically, formu formulaically, <laughs> I hope that's a word, and it will have an outcome completely indetermined by yourself. The equation sets itself up equal sign outcome. You don't affect like the math. 2 plus 2 is 4. It doesn't matter how... If you want it to be three or not, it comes out four. So you add that to the formula, you add that layer to it, it's going to set up this problem, equal sign, outcome. And then you're going to do the thing, or you're going to think the thought, and then you continue to live your life. And it's all, like I said, this, like, this hand is always going to be grabbing you, or it's always going to be around you. And uh, you can't escape it. 
So it doesn't matter how many layers. It doesn't matter how desperate you want to be, I guess, is the way I like to... <laughs> no offense, but the way I view it, how, how many how many ludicrous amount of layers you add funneling into each other like a upside-down pyramid scheme or something. You think it's all so complicated. It's all coming from all these outside sources. But these outside sources still, the way that the way they work is still the way our reality works because there's no other way for it to work there's no there's and like i said again i'll say it i know i said it like four times you can't get past cause and effect you can't get past chaos and it doesn't matter how many layers of reality you want to add none of those layers are going to work really any different i mean maybe there's a chaos layer whatever maybe there's a strict cause and effect layer maybe ours isn't strictly cause and effect maybe it's one percent chaos or whatever it is but it doesn't matter when there's no freedom in any of these things. At the end of the day, the it, it the the equation, the whole like you know X Y Z equals question mark. That's always going to take over, and it's always wrapped around everything, no matter what. So yeah, you just can't escape it, and it shouldn't be scary, and it shouldn't be depressing. It's just the way it is. And like I said, tomorrow's a new day. So, I mean, it's more, it's just a thought, you know, it's philosophy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really affect my day, if I'm being honest. It's just, I think it's good to understand that. And it it lays a foundation for, I guess, correct thinking. And I think correct thinking is going to get correct uh, outcomes. So, I I think there is benefit to, to... There's benefit to thinking about it, but not to dwell on it every single day. Oh, God, I have no freedom. Oh, Jesus, you know, like, yeah, no, I mean, in all intents and purposes, like, being a human being, like, hey, do I want to go to my friend's house this weekend? Sure, or no, and that's whatever, and you can feel good about that decision. Who cares? It's a decision you're making, in a way. But, you know, philosophically and in reality, you don't really have freedom. But it's just... It's so convincing that it's kind of like... It's just something we accept. If, it's Not to be the reality, but for the day... To, just for the sake of it, for the day-to-day. I think it's something we accept. And, um... Yeah, there's the whole... I mean, I already talked about the youth and growing up or whatever. Yeah, it's just that level of magic that people... You can't let go of it or you're going to just lay down and die. And yeah, no one's doing that. So there is at least at least a fraction of a percentage of magic still in you, and uh, feel good about that. So yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully said something in there. <laughs>